Well, the storage area network is not pure networking concept because it's a combination of both server infrastructure and network infrastructure. So in this topic, we are going to touch the basics of storage area network where networking part comes in. So let's get started. First, let's discuss what this storage is. If we take an example from our personal PC, we have the storage of our hard drive. This can be either 250 GB, 500 GB, or it might be some one terabyte of hard space you might have on your PC, right? But if you are the person who need like more space, like you are creating some documents which requires the more space on your PC. So like you are keep storing the documents on your PC, but one time it's going to get like you know out of hard space so what you basically gonna do you might gonna purchase external hard drive or maybe pen drive so you are going to transfer your existing data from pc to hard drive so that you can have some free space on your pc right so that is something we normally do with our personal computer at the same time what if our personal computer is going to be crash maybe software wise or maybe hardware wise and that is the reason we take like external hard drive to keep the backup, right? So this is the similar concept applies in enterprise storage as well. Let's try to understand how it applies in enterprise storage. If you are the person who is working in enterprise office, then your PC must be having the hard disk capacity, maybe 250 GB or maybe 500 GB, but still you won't be able to use those all space because your system administrator wants you to save all your documents or important data on server. This is because if your computer crashes for some reason then you should be having backup on server itself. But the problem is you are not the only person who is storing this data on server. Because in enterprise offices there can be hundreds and thousands of users might be doing the same thing. So this all thousands of users might be storing their data on server itself. Now the first challenge come here which is the storage on the server. Because if this all thousands of users saving their data on server, then server should have that hard disk capacity which can handle all of this data, right? Then the second challenge come which is performance on the server. Since users are going to access this data all the time, then server should have that kind of the performance level which could serve the request is coming from the users. So this is not only for the server because since these users are accessing their data from other places on the network, then the network is also become the part of this storage access or data access. So when it comes to accessing data on server, it become the part of the server infrastructure and network infrastructure. So when such kind of requirement came in enterprise offices that users supposed to save their data on server itself, there come the requirement of the server which could handle this kind of request. So there come one of the server called network attached storage also known as NAS. But one of the big issue with the NAS is it has a performance issue. Because if the users are trying to access their data from the server, it works upon the SMB protocol. And this SMB protocol has a performance issue and that is the reason this NAS server basically used in small to medium size offices. But if your company has thousands of users then NAS is not a good option. So to handle this performance related issue there comes storage area network also known as SAN. One of the great advantage of using storage area network is they work upon the FCP protocol also known as fiber channel protocol. But this is like very expensive technology because this technology work upon the block level access which means if users want to access their data they are not going to face any kind of performance issue they might be filled they are accessing this data from their hard drive itself. The second advantage of having SAN is it has a better redundancy which means if one of your server fails you still have other server running side by side. And because of this redundancy, you would never know if there was failure happen in the server infrastructure. The other advantage of having storage area network is you can keep increasing its storage capacity. Now let's talk about how storage area network is designed. So as per the design voice, if you are the user who is sitting on the desk, 
your system connects to the distribution switch which mainly handles the switching in the network. Then this distribution switches connects to core switches which handles the routing between other VLANs or other networks. Then this core switches connect to application servers where you try to access your applications. And there comes storage area network after this server. After this servers there are the switches available which handles the fiber channel protocol which means they are designed to support this storage area network. But the problem with FCP or fiber channel protocol is they are very expensive. Therefore, some enterprise offices they use alternative to FCP is iSCSI. iSCSI stands for Internet Small Computer System Interface. If FCP doesn't fit in your budget, then you can go ahead with iSCSI. Now the network speed handled by these switches goes from 10 gig until 128 gig. The latest speed was recorded until 200 gig capacity. And maybe in future is going to be keep increasing. It might go until like terabyte of capacity, who knows, right? Then after this FCP switches, there comes storage area network servers. Well, this is one of the logical design which goes from user until SAN server. Well, this was all about storage area network. And after this topic, we have completed all of the networking terms we use in computer networking. Now, I will see you in the next video with different topic.